Hey everybody, it's Dwayne, developer evangelist at Git Kraken. I'm here with some advanced Git tips. These are some ways to use Git from the command line to unlock some of the power features that are built into the world's most popular version control system. We're going to be using the Git Kraken CLI to do most of what we're doing today, but these commands will work inside of the terminal in VS Code, iTerm, Terminal, any terminal that has access to Git. Git reflog is one of the true superpowers of Git. You're probably familiar with Git log, which shows you the commit history for your repository, including your authorship, when things were committed. It's very useful. However, Git tracks all of your work that you do in that Git repository at a very fine grain level. Here I'm in a terminal tab inside of Git Kraken client. Now I can access the Git Kraken CLI through the terminal tab, or I can open a terminal panel inside of a what we call a repo tab but let's stick to a terminal tab for now. So let's just run a quick git log and, oh, you can see auto suggest, suggest one of my favorite flags, one line. So that's the that history of the project. Shouldn't be too surprising. This looks exactly like our commit graph down here. But let's go ahead and run git ref log. And you see git crack and CLI auto suggest that as well. And wow, there's just a lot more information here than there was in my git log. The commits are definitely still there, but so is everything else that has happened inside this repository. Uh, the reset that I did to get me back to a good state, the rebases I was playing around with, the branches that I deleted after forcing some merge conflicts to play around with that, it's all here. Not only is the information here and the full history, but there's also a way to get back to any of these states. If I do a git checkout of, let's say, head at curly brace four, that's going to get me back to this many steps from where head is right now. And that's right before I did that reset. So any file changes that I made during this step are still going to be present. I can copy them out. I can make a new branch out of them. I can do any Git action against it that I want to. Git stores every single action that happens to a repository for 30 days. And Git reflog will show you that history. Git garbage collection is something that you might not have run into, especially if you're working with small repositories or infrequently making changes. However, the larger the repository and the more file changes you make, the handier this tool becomes. Let's take a quick look at how this works. This... Let's use VS Code to take a closer look at the file structure of Git itself. So inside of my GitLens project, I have a .git folder that's actually keeping track of all the things going on. One of those folders is the objects folder. This has a bunch of directories in it that contain the actual objects that, well, gets tracking over time. These are binaries, they're not human readable, but Git can read them just fine. You notice there's an awful lot of them. Here I am in a terminal tab again in Git Kraken client. I'm gonna do a git gc. And it was really quick and it showed, wow, enumerating 40,000 objects, it counted them, it compressed them, and it wrote the objects to something, and it's done. Let's go take a look at that same folder that we were just looking at in VS Code. And you can see immediately there are a lot less folders in our objects folder. What happened to all those other objects? Well, they were compressed down to a pack file and stored there for long-term storage in a very, very compressed format. That's what compressing objects meant. So writing it was writing those pack files. It has cleaned up a lot of garbage that's been hanging out in our repository. The more files you change over time, the more objects get added to that object folder. And with any kind of folder structure, the larger it is, the slower it starts getting over time. Git GC can speed up your repository greatly, especially if you're making a lot of changes or you're working with a very large repository. Git Clean is a very handy tool that'll help you remove files that aren't needed for your project but got created along the way. Here I'm in a terminal tab in Git Kraken Client looking at my GitLens repository. I'm gonna run a quick ls. Let's say that I made three different test files. And if I do a git status, it will show me that I have not tracked these files. I was using them for local testing. They don't really need to be committed or shared outside of my machine. So I'm okay deleting them. I have a number of ways to do that, uh, but Git provides me a very clean way to do that with Git clean. So if I do a Git clean, there's a number of options I could do this with, but I'm gonna throw the dash I flag. It will actually ask me 
what I want to do. Dash I is the interactive mode. So what I want to do is clean and it's going to go ahead and remove those for me. Since I didn't make any other commits, I just did some testing to test a thing. I'm right back to the state I was before I added any of those files. If I do a git status, you see that, yep, I'm clean and those files are gone. Very handy tool. Git grep is an extremely powerful tool that will help you quickly find files that contain a certain string or expression inside of your repository. If you're not familiar with grep, grep stands for global regular expression print. It's a tool built into bash and Unix like systems to do a quick search against regular expression. With regular grep, you need to declare what you're searching, what specific files, what type of files, wildcard, all of that stuff. One of the really cool things about git grep is that it removes the complexity of having to declare where you're searching and just looks everywhere inside of that repository. So just for an example, let's say I'm doing my work and I realize I'd like to update this variable name. I would need to know where does that variable name appear across the project. Here I am in a terminal tab in git kraken client. I'm looking at the GitLens repository and I'm gonna go ahead and do a git grep. Oh, you can suggest it for me. And I'm gonna look for that term, that variable here. And hit return a few times and there's the end. I see that that name appears in the change log marked down, the readme, uh, but the package JSON and the constants TS. These are places I definitely need to worry about if I'm gonna go making any changes to show commit search. And again, I didn't need to tell grep where to search. By using git grep, it simply searched all the files that were tracked by git. If you've ever been working in a branch and thought, I'd really like to have an archive of this locally before I merge and delete this branch, well, git's got you covered. That's what git archive is all about. Git archive is one of the older commands in git that lets you take any chain of references, that's what it means by tree-ish, branch is a primary example, and package it up and, well, store that archive under any name you want. There are a lot of options with this, so like every other command that we're talking about with advanced git tips, I'd highly encourage you to go look at the git SEM manual to learn about all the possible options you can use. Here I am in a terminal tab inside of git kraken client. I'm gonna do a quick git branch to see all the branches available. Let's say for today's example, I have completed my work with the PRs branch and it's been merged and it's time to delete it to clean up after myself. However, I know there's a lot of work in there that I'd kind of like to archive somewhere. Let's go ahead and make an archive of it. So git archive, and then I need to specify that chain of commits or the tree-ish. In this case, I'm gonna do the features PR. And then I need to tell git where to store that. So negative O for the output. Uh, in my machine, I do have an archive folder that I like to use. And there I will put it as git lens PRs. I'm gonna make a tarball out of it. You can use a lot of different compression algorithms. Tarballs just generally work for the machines I'm working on, so that's what I'm gonna do. And if I go ahead and run that, it doesn't look like much happened, but if I do a quick LS of uh, my archives folder on my machine, there it is, that tarball sitting and waiting on me. One of the awesome core components of Git is the ability for authors to explain themselves as they're committing changes using commit messages. However, there are certain circumstances where it would be nice to have an additional layer of conversation or note taking outside of those commit messages. And that's where Git Notes comes in. Git Notes allows you to append an additional message to a Git commit. Here I am in a terminal tab in Git Kraken Client. I'm gonna go ahead and do a Git Notes list. And not surprisingly, nothing's there because I haven't made any notes yet. So to make a note, let's say I wanna add a note onto this most recent commit. Since I'm in Git Kraken Client, all I have to do is click on the SHA over here and it copies it to my clipboard. So I will type git notes add, and then dash M to specify the message, just like I would with a commit message. I'm gonna just write this as an example, because that's what it is, and then paste that SHA. And it doesn't look like much happened, but if I run that same git notes list again, it shows me, yes, there is a git note, and it happened on this commit. It also shows me the parent of that commit. How do I read that note? Well, that is git notes show, and then paste that same sha again. And there's the note. Now, what if I wanted to remove those notes? Well, same way I added it, I could do git notes 
remove, and then again, paste that SHA, and it removes from that note. And let's do a get notes list, and it's gone. Next time you run into a situation where you need to make some kind of commentary on top of a commit message, remember get notes is there for you. This next tip isn't a command, it is a configuration. If you work in the CLI long enough, you're eventually gonna mistype things. The Git team understands this and actually built in an autocorrect feature. To turn this on, we will use the git config command, set it globally so it's across all of your repos, and turn on help.autocorrect. This last number is how long it takes git to actually correct the command and rerun it. Uh, so for instance, if I type git ddd instead of git add, it will wait, in this case, five tenths of a second or half a second. So it works in tenths of a second increments. So here I am in a terminal tab in Git Kraken Client. So I can do a git config. There you go. And we will use the autocomplete to set it to global. And this is one of the help functions and it's called autocorrect. And I'm gonna set to 20 tenths of a second or two seconds is another way to say that. Um, and there it's set. So if I try to do a git status and just do git stats instead, it's gonna say, I don't have a stats. I think you meant status. Let me go ahead and run this. You have complete control over how long it takes to automatically rerun. So if it's gonna do something that you don't want it to do, you'll have a chance to control C to stop it from doing that. Git allows you to create Git aliases. You might be familiar with the concept of aliasing from Bash or Zish, it works the same general way. Git allows you to specify a keyword that will then translate into a longer phrase. In the example here, we're going to set our git config globally to have an alias called last, so we can run git last. And what that will actually run is git log minus one head, which will just show us the last entry in our git log. Let's go ahead and set this up. Here I am in a terminal tab in git kraken client, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a git config. There we go, and I do want this to be global. And I'm going to alias dot last to mean log minus one head, which will just show me the last entry. So now if I run a git last, that's the last entry I made. And sure enough, that is the last entry on my git log. And the sky's really the limit with this. Uh, any longer string in Git, you can make an alias for. However, a couple words of caution. One, if you have put autocorrect on before and you try to alias something like Git, I don't know, ls, it's gonna automatically pick up, hey, that's not an actual command. I'm gonna run something similar. In this case, it tried to run Git LFS on me. Also, you'll cause problems if you try to set it to a term that already exists in Git. So just a little bit of caution, but it can save a lot of typing if used correctly. Thanks very much for watching today. I hope you learned something. No matter what terminal you're using, the Git Kraken CLI with its built-in autocomplete suggestions or the integrated terminal in VS Code or whatever terminal you prefer, we hope that our advanced Git tips are useful to you and that you can leverage them in your work.